Jay, I was wondering, do you see differences in these PTSD brains and do you have anything to show us about that? Well, I just happen to have some. <laughs> Uh, let, let me do a quick screen share here and um, uh, take a peek at actual EEG, which is what I like to do. Um, this is an eyes closed. This is uh, uh, an eyes closed EEG, full of alpha, and there's an excess of coherence in the alpha up front. You can see the alpha all lines up in phase. Uh, there's phase shift at the back of the head where there's some function but the affective regulation and attentional regulation up front is just uh, uh, idled out. Now, uh, the, you can have this pattern with lots of uh, different presentations just with simple depression. Now, there's a, a eyes uh, a closed drowsiness that's occurring uh, back to a, a regular eyes closed with alpha. But uh, the transition to eyes open is a rather dramatic change. Uh, this is eyes open. Look at the back of the head. Uh, th these are lambda waves. And lambda is not a, 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 a Greek term rhythm. It's an event, uh, a P100 wave of an event-related potential. Uh, and uh, what we basically see is uh, somebody who's got their amygdala charged up with emotion. Uh, fear, uh, anger, uh, but a, a primary emotion. You basically change the thalamic gating and the P100 wave arrives very large and early. And we can't tell when the person focused on something. All we can see is the lambda waves at the back of the head. And uh, they're, they're not present in, in eyes closed because they're a visual processing related rhythm. Well, uh, not a rhythm, an event. And uh, the, the EEG here ends up having lots of them. Now, uh, the other item that's seen in this particular EEG is, is that the person ends up having derealization or uh, uh, dissociation. And uh, the, uh, these things are more subtle. Uh, they're not uh, gross observables like this. They're subtleties. On the screen at this moment, there's a slow rhythm that's seen at F7 and T7, the left frontotemporal area. And a cycle and a half didn't fit in a fifth of a second. So this is below the normal alpha rhythm frequency range. Uh, it's a localized uh, slow rhythmicity. And, you know, it, it's hard to describe to somebody who isn't really deep into waveforms that this looks like it's coming from the insula to me. Uh, but uh, let me do a little bit of bad art. Uh, uh, this wave and this wave that were in phase and, and superimposed on each other have an inversion, a phase reversal to CZ. And when you have uh, the midline of the brain, the frontal lobe, the uh, temporal lobe, again, really, really bad art here, but the, the insula is very deep in. And the pyramidal cells here would discharge orienting out. And you pick those up in phase at F7, T7, it's out of phase. The butt end of that dipole is picked up at CZ, out of phase. And, you know, it, when I see the EG, that's what I see. I'm, I'm looking at this going, damn, look at that insula. So, um, but it, I, I can't really uh, uh, describe this to people who can't see it. So, there's visualizing uh, tools that we can use to do source analysis. And this is the source of that particular feature. It has the insula on the left side, which is uh, undoubtedly involved in the, the, the salience network is the anterior cingulate in both insula. And uh, the temporal lobe and uh, insula on the left side are uh, not functioning normally. Uh, the frequencies are off. And uh, what we basically see is people that have derealization, depersonalization uh, uh, with their PTSD end up having insular involvement in, in like this. Now, the anterior cingulate is obviously uh, uh, part of the salience network. And if this network isn't working right, things that are actually real and salient don't really quite seem right, that they, they don't 
really have the normal salience of something that's real. That this is a derealization, depersonalization uh, biomarker. The lambda waves at the back of the head tell us the person is visually hypervigilant and their amygdala is overcharged because uh, the, this rhythm or this finding is essentially not very common in adults. Uh, they're uh, very, very common on young kids looking around, uh, but in adults, it's not that common. And uh, in PTSD subjects, uh, visual hypervigilance is one of the classic biomarkers. Uh, we, uh, we see this as a, uh, a, one of the easy to spot uh, the signals that the person's uh, uh, got uh, hypervigilance. And that is, is one of the things that's associated with uh, PTSD. But that, that's the kind of stuff I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I look at wiggly lines and uh, try to interpret what they mean. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of like a master mechanic listening to the hood of your car and telling you that you need a valve job. You know, the, uh, the, the, they didn't have to go in there and tear it apart to find out what was wrong. Uh, they could sense the vibration of it being wrong from the outside. And the EEG is kind of like that. It's uh, uh, surface oscillations that reflect uh, deeper uh, structures. And uh, if, you, if you've read too many of them, like I have, you start to see things. And uh, if you're seeing things, you're either crazy or you might have seen something that's real. Um, I, I published about the uh, endophenotypes uh, that, that are genetically linked to EG patterns in 2005. Um, and that, that was seeing patterns in the data, uh, which uh, could have been just, you know, idiocy. Uh, but you have to publish about it so people can test the, the, the findings. And luckily, it's all turned out fairly well because it, it was a retrospective observation of 500,000 or more EEGs. And uh, it could have just been, you know, a bad brain looking at wiggly lines and coming up with something that wasn't even meaningful. But uh, uh, luckily, the, the genetically linked EEG patterns have been validated and uh, the, the, the biomarkers end up being quite uh, predictive and useful for, for uh, predicting protocols and training approaches.